Hey guys, it's Simon from Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Time another fly for you today. Gonna be doing a uh, rusty spinner or a spent PMD spinner. Um, super productive fly for the evening spinner fall of the PMD hatch. Uh, one of my favorite times to uh, fish for PMD, the PMD hatch actually. Uh, that hatch will bring up some really big fish because they know they're eating um, bugs that aren't gonna <clears throat> run away on them because they're already dead. So um, that low light conditions and that abundance of food Falling back to the river is a really great time to catch a large fish uh, in the summertime. And this fly is generally what does it for me. Um, very overlooked, um, kind of more of the technical side of dry fly fishing, but it's definitely a fly that you want if you're fishing a PMD hatch, especially into the evening. So um, we'll get to it. Um, so kind of looking at this fly, it's tied on a standard um, straight shank dry fly hook. Um, Got a buyout body, CDL tails, a little bit of dubbing, and um, widow's web, and a little bit of crystal flash. It's really simple, um, pretty quick tie. Um, I tied on a small hook, size 16. Um, you can fish it anywhere from size 14 to six, uh, 18, probably. Um, uh, the slower the water, if you're on like a spring creek, um, you might want to go smaller. But um, this is the size I tied in as a 16. So the hook I use is a TMC 100. Um, this one happens to be a barbless. Um, it's better for the fish, but it doesn't make a difference for the pattern really. So, put this in and get going. So the thread I like to use, again, I'm using this Semperfly Nano Silk. Um, it's my favorite thread, especially for stuff like this. Um, with a pretty slim body where I can't afford to uh, build up too much bulk, um, especially towards the back where I have to add a couple things here. So um, we'll take our wraps to the back here, and the very first thing you got to do is um, you got to put, or the way I do it at least, is I put a tiny little ball of dubbing to help flare out the tails. Um, I'm using this micro fine dry um, dub sulfur yellow. Um, I'm choosing this color because. A lot of times the females will fall to the river with um, an egg sack attached to the rear still. Um, and I was reading in a book, I have not experienced this, but um, in one of Kelly Gallup's books, he was saying that he was fishing a hatch where if a spinner fall and if the, for brown trout in Michigan, I believe, and he said if there was not a yellow egg sack, the fish didn't want anything to do with it. So. Um, this doubles as a useful, you know, piece of tying the fly. This dubbing help flare these tails out, but also, you know, if you happen to be fishing for picky fish, this yellow spot might just uh, kind of save your evening. Um, so I like to tie them in. The tails are pretty long on these spinners, um, and they will f flare out a little bit like this, hopefully, when you tie it in. Um, and then once it's secured, you kind of bring the wraps up front, just enough to hold it in, um, and cut it. This CDL I'm using is the um, Medium Speckled Pardo um, from Hairline, they make really good stuff. Um, cool, and then so what's next is I'm using a um, part of a turkey feather. Um, they call this the posterior vein here, the biots are on this side. This is, um, you know, they look just like biots but they're much thinner. I think they're easier to work with if I'm tying a small fly. So um, we'll kind of tie this in and bring the wraps to the back here and um, you know a lot of people use these biots for a body and I like them the only issue I have with them is um, they don't withstand fish mouth and mouths and teeth very well so what I like to do just as a precautionary measure is I do like to add a little bit of zap a gap um, before I kind of polymer this thing in place. Um, it just helps my flies stay together. Um, it's one little extra step that you certainly can omit, but I think your fly will last a lot longer. Um, especially for something like this, if you're gonna be fishing like, you know, right before the sun goes down and you're running out of light, you really don't wanna be, um, you really don't wanna be having to retie a fly on when you can hardly see, so. In my experience, I will take the extra time and add a little bit of glue to help uh, secure it. And so now we're taking wraps of this um, this 
posterior vein or biot up to the front. Um, and then we'll cinch it off here. And then we will clip the excess. Um, hackle pliers help with this. Um, these are my favorite types of hackle pliers. It will be in the material list below what they're called. Uh, the name is escaping me right now, but I've tried a lot of them and these are my favorite. Um, they're ones Charlie Craven likes too, it says on the packaging, so you can trust that a competent tire uses them. Um, they're, they're good. And so we'll kind of trim up the rest here. Um, for the wings, what we're using is Widow's Web. Um, you can also use EP trigger point fibers in white. Um, that works really good. Um, I just grabbed this because I used it and this is a little more stout than the trigger point fibers, but those work. Those are the two best materials I've found. Um, Antron or Zelon or something like that might work too. And I like to mix that with a little bit of crystal flash um, and pearl. So what you kind of got to do is you take cross wraps like you're putting in eyes on a clouser here. Um, just kind of make an X and you want the wings to stick out. I like to get them pretty close to the to the eye of the hook. That's naturally where the wings will sit. They have they do have a long abdomen when they um, are spinners especially. And uh, you know their body does kind of stand out as a long section um, on the water when they fall and die. So I will now trim the wings. Um, I like to trim them longer first because if you trim them too short you can't go back. Um, so what I like to do first is I do like one safety trim here just to make it easier for me to work. Um, and then I will add dubbing, see how it looks, and then trim them to the correct size. For the body color dubbing, I like to use this uh, dry fly tan. Um, by the time they're spinners, they darken up a bit and that sulfur yellow color is just way too bright. Um, and so just a little bit here, this is just to build up, you know, an abdomen, a little, or a thorax, sorry. Um, and this will kind of hold your, uh, the wings in place here. They do have just a little bit of bulk there um, where their wings are, but just a tad bit more. But again, this is a, you know, must have for someone who really likes technical dry fly fishing and you'll notice there's not much hackle on this um, and I think that's fine. Those spinners, they're not alive anymore at this point, so they are making absolutely no effort to uh, stay on the surface, so they're getting pushed underwater, they're getting, um, you know, they're like half sunk or fully sunk or, you know, even floating along the bottom, so you can, after a spinner fall, if you're allowed to fish where it's dark where you live, you can tag this under a, um, like as a nymph, and drop it below. Um, because they're so small, I like to fish them um, behind a larger fly, like a, like a chubby, golden stone chubby. Um, those hatches happen simultaneously where in Oregon here, so that's how I keep track of where my fly is. But um, I try to make the wings, you know, about this long. If you measure them, they're just, just a hair past the body. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I like to put just a dab of uh, Solaris Bone Dry to, to hold the wraps in place here. Um, and I do, I'll put it on the dubbing a little bit because, you know, I don't mind if it, this isn't, you know, the dubbing's not there to help it float, even though it's dry dubbing. So it's just easier to glue it that way. And so here is a um, rusty spinner, um, spent PMD, whatever you want to call it. Really great fly to have in the, uh, in the summertime when, uh, I'm going to trim these wings down just a hair more, but really great fly to have for the spinner fall in the summer. Um, caught a lot of really big fish on this tiny little fly. So um, give it a go. Let us know what you think. Thanks.